Another Monday is upon us along with a new champion at the box office. The SpongeBob movie managed to knock American Sniper down to second place. Myself not being able to acquire the necessary child to justify entering the SpongeBob theater, I decided to check out the number three movie of the weekend. So here's my take on the Wachowski Brothers' new sci-fi action adventure, Jupiter Ascending. Our film begins with a lowly girl. Jupiter Jones, played by Mila Kunis, lives with her large family of immigrants and spends her days as a maid scrubbing toilets. She is miserable with her current position in life and dreams of bigger things. Her life suddenly takes a turn for the inexplicable when a group of aliens attempts to assassinate her at a doctor's office. She is rescued by a genetically enhanced alien warrior known as Kane, played by Channing Tatum. His mission is to protect her and deliver her to his employer. While they are hiding out, waiting to leave the planet, Jupiter is informed that she is intergalactic royalty and stands to acquire a big inheritance, including the planet Earth itself. As weird as this plot sounds already, it gets stranger. Jupiter discovers that she is the reincarnation of the Abrasax monarch, and each of her offspring are trying to locate her for their own inside reasons. Meanwhile, as an attraction blooms between Jupiter and Cain, he starts to question his mission and the true reasons behind it. All continuity in the film suddenly goes out the window as the central theme becomes betrayal. It becomes difficult to follow who are the good guys and who are the bad, along with which group of people are working together and who exactly are against each other. As the movie progresses, we see one action sequence after another. We see the plight of each character change before our very eyes as the action continues but to what desired objective, we are still unsure. As the film nears its conclusion, as a viewer, you find yourself wondering if there is enough time left to wrap everything up. Then, more time elapses, and you find yourself hoping that they will just go ahead and wrap it up. Eventually, there is a resolution, but the audience is left wondering what exactly transpired during the past two hours. So, what to say about this film? If you found my description of it at all confusing, that's because the movie itself was in fact confusing. They try and do all these subplots and backstories, but they never actually complete any of them. The best comparison I could make would be if you took all three Matrix movies and condensed them into one two hour long film. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I think the Wachowski brothers wrote a long, intricate, detailed space opera, and the studio execs were like, we love it, but we're only giving you one film in which to do it. Channing Tatum and Mila Kunis do all right in it, but what I can't figure out is how Eddie Redmayne went from his Oscar-nominated performance as Stephen Hawking to basically just channeling Voldemort from Harry Potter. If there was any upside, it's that I saw it in 3D, and it's a very pretty film, visually stunning to say the least. Christie said that she hated the SpongeBob movie as well, so in retrospect, I think the thing to do would have been to go see Seventh Son with Jeff Bridges. But, on to movies that you actually should see. Be sure to tune in this Wednesday through Friday and next Monday through Friday as I count down to the Oscars by reviewing each of the Best Picture nominees one day at a time in my Oscars overview. Well, this has been your Monday Movie Musing. Christy, back to you.